Welcome to Think Tech on Spectrum OC16, Hawaii's weekly newscast on things that matter to tech and to Hawaii. I'm Jay Fidel. And I'm Keisha King. In our show this time, we'll review some of our earlier Trump Week episodes, where we connect the dots on what he is doing. We reviewed these shows before, but given the news these days, it's important that we continue that coverage. We do a weekly talk show called Trump Week, where we look at actions and events generated by and surrounding Donald Trump and his administration at the White House and try to make some sense of what they are doing. As we have seen, the decisions and actions of this president are often unpredictable and driven by impulsive and inappropriate motivations rather than by the interests of the country. So we and each of us need to be mindful of what has gone on before and keep track of the context and the individuals who are influencing and participating in those decisions and actions. Given the revelations concerning his decisions and actions in the Ukraine scandal, the impeachment investigation, the unraveling of the Middle East, the degradation of our immigration policy, and the economic disruptions of the trade war against China, we all need to follow what is going on in the White House. Given the court packing, the litigation of so many unprecedented issues now in the pipeline to the Supreme Court, the expanding crisis in the balance of power between the branches of government, the regular attacks against our constitutional rights, including voter rights and freedom of the press, we all need to follow what is going on in the White House. Given the failure of our foreign policy, the decline of our critical diplomatic relationships, the emergence of despots in so many places, the violence and disorder around the world, and the obvious, looming, and terrifying prospects of global climate change, we all need to follow what is going on in the White House. In Trump Week, we try to examine what the president is doing and what effect it is having and likely to have on this country and the world. So here's a few clips from our Trump Week series. There are, of course, many more. If you want to see these shows in their entirety, check out thinktechhawaii.com or our Trump Week playlist on youtube.com slash thinktechhawaii. The president is not above the law. There is no good reason whatsoever. Uh, to exempt him from this process or from criminal investigation. Trump's saying, well, you know, I can't be a, a, a indicted because I'm a sitting president. Well, that's never been a Supreme Court ruling. It was an opinion in the DOJ. Um, so the judge took issue to that. And, and, you know, here we have the president in the White House saying, well, not only are we not uh, subject to indictment, but also now we're not subject to impeachment. And, the, you know, the judge took issue with us. Yeah. So what are you? I mean, basically, you have self-declared yourself king of, a, of the United that's States. That's where he's been going. And if you connect the dots with our little show over here, Trump Week, that's what you find. And, and the really troubling thing is that people seem to accept this. It, it, it has a ring about it. It has a familiarity about it. He wants to be king. He wants to be a dictator. He doesn't want to be troubled by the Constitution. I think we're in a constitutional crisis because he's going to keep on doing that. Which takes me to one sidebar point, mm -hmm. and I've been trying to figure it out. I've been talking to people, trying to get their, you know, their thoughts on it. why does the base support this craziness? Doesn't the base know this is this is a stress and strain and a breach of, of the United States Constitution of everything this country stands for? Why do they support him? Support him? Give him money? You know, he's got almost a billion dollars in the till, and it increased every time he gets to, you know, he does one of these really wild things. He gets more money. Why do they support him? Do you have a theory? I have theories only. Um, this theory may be similar to Richard Nixon when he was being impeached. Uh, they were going through the, the process, and he maintained a strong 38%. Well, not strong, but he maintained 38%. Why wasn't those numbers lower? Um, Donald Trump has a cult of personality. And you know, I'm getting to the point where I'm going to start saying the cult of personality is similar to Jim Jones. I mean, yes. if, if, if he says, drink the Kool-Aid, boys and girls, um, do as I say, I it's fatal. I, I'm not sure that they wouldn't do it. Oh, I agree with you. you shoot know, this somebody is, on Fifth Avenue and get away with it. Yeah. You, know, these are, you know, these are extreme things for me to have to say. But at this point, there's a certain percentage of this country. They know that he's, you know, he's trying to basically break the Constitution. He's trying to be above the rule of law, and they don't care. Now, your question is why? Well... I think they just like him. They like the cult of personality. I think 
that Donald Trump appeals to their inner, if you will, racist uh, tendencies. Um, he's trying to make America great again. Well, what does that mean? You know, nostalgia for the nostalgia for no rights for for women, death. no rights for you know gay, lesbian, uh, no rights for you know minorities. Um, you know, tight immigration. Uh, I don't mind these tight immigration issues, but this is not the best and the best that America can do. Remember the old adage: when you're in a hole, stop digging. So, what is he doing to further dig in the hole? Um, he's saying that no one's going to show up without the state, the state attorneys, uh, the State Department attorneys. That's a form of witness intimidation. Um, he's going to start refusing these the subpoenas. Um, these are things he that he's, refusing. you know, Adam Schiff now has, has warned him that these kind of, uh, um, to ignore subpoenas and or documents will, be, will constitute, as did with Richard Nixon, um, articles of um, impeachment, impeachment for that for office. For obstruction, for obstruction yeah, for, for the impeachment. He's obstructing this investigation, and he's a critical principal witness to it, yeah. if not a party to it. So, you know, what's interesting is that uh, in the bottom of the, the of Congress, of the Capitol building, there is a jail, you know. And theoretically, they have the power to jail people who are in contempt. They haven't done it, not in a long time. But, right. But, um, you know, it, it, the question is raised now. How do they enforce congressional m investigations? Because uh, Trump has blown them off on, on many, many occasions. And you know he has told people, don't testify. Well, we know that through the Robert Mueller investigation and certainly a number of counts of obstruction in that. But yeah. that's not going to be brought up in this. It's too convoluted, too complex. This is very simple to understand. Let's keep it simple. Let's keep it simple. Yeah. And right now, it's, they're just adding more to the charges. Because if they do not show up for testimony or they do withhold documents, it's a slam dunk. And you know who's causing it. Well, let's look at the other guy, the Attorney General of the United States. May I say that again? The Attorney General of the United States, one of the highest positions in the cabinet. Um, he's about justice. He's about truth. He's about enforcing the laws. And here the guy is breaking the laws. He's on junkets. Right. He's on junkets talking to uh, run Trump's agenda about coercing these nation leaders to do Trump's bidding. Again. Again. You know, so, I mean, I, you know, I feel that he should never have been confirmed that uh, Congress bought a bill of goods on him, um, as they did on Pompeo. And, um, and, and unfortunately, it's hard to get rid of him. You have to impeach him, and Trump will back him up. And, you know, that'll be a distraction, a digression. Um, the real target here, and should be, is Trump himself. Do you remember during the hearings, um, Kamala Harris asked Barr, have you ever been instructed to um, initiate an investigation um, from Donald Trump? Yeah. And he hemmed and hawed, and he went around and around trying to define the, the term, um, you know, investigate. Yeah. Oh, it was something else. That serves as a real reminder that that, qu that question and that answer was right then and there. He had been asked. What is he doing here, and how does he intend it should affect the national the public opinion on on whistleblowing and impeachment impeachment yesterday impeachment yeah. well since this program first went on the air and certainly years before that um what has come out of our mouths time and time again is his ability to distract <laughs> the silver shiny object this speech is nothing more than a distraction trying to divert attention away from the seriousness of this impeachment vote or excuse me, the impeachment inquiry. And the bottom line is, we know how good he is on distraction, and I've got 14 points right out of the gate on this speech to distract us from this seriousness, the seriousness of this impeachment inquiry. Well, were the points he made true? I kept thinking, wow, the newspapers well, are gonna have a good time with this. Uh, you know, in, in truth versus lies, they're well, gonna be able to find a lot of lies in there. Well, here's the one I like is that you know, there, there's no president but me that has changed things around and made America number one. And the people will need to realize that if I'm not around or whoever the next president will be number two or number three. He said, I have brought trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars into our economy. China has lost trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars and lost millions and millions of jobs. Um, this is hyperbole at its finest. 
It's not true. It's not, not true. true. That's what it's hyperbole is. It's a great lie. And, yeah. and there are people out there, I hate to say this, whose educations take them to believe what he says. They believe it. They accept it. And you this know, is a, I heard one lie after another. I hope the Washington Post, he called them the Amazon Washington Post. I love that. <laughs> Conflating everything about everybody. Right. They're all bad. They're all in a conspiracy against me. Right. Just another, you know, witch hunt against me. And it's a hoax, he said. How do you react to that? I mean, what, what do you see from all of this as his M.O. in dealing with the crisis he has on his plate right now? Well, right now I see him providing cover for the fact that Rudy Giuliani was in Ukraine and was poking around and he has no reason to be. Now, suddenly he says he was sent by the state and the state does not support that. So they're trying to make it that he's there for a different reason. He's there to investigate the Russia hoax. And so it's like he's just trying to provide cover for things that are going to be coming down the pipe and that he can see. So many doubt. lies. This so reminds lies. me of the discussion that, that Jared had about adoptions. Adoptions right. in Russia. Yeah, right. It's a lie. It's not, you know, you have to be a fool to accept it. And um, I don't, you know, there are people who will accept it, I'm sorry to say, in this country, but the press. At least the press I read will not accept it. He's going to get called on it. Civil servants who have contributed a lot to our country, the defense of our country, to our national security, and Trump is after both of them. And just when you thought, you know, that all of that was simmered down, oh no, now he's uh, initiating investigations through um, your friend, the Attorney General uh, Barr, Barr, which is really awful. Um, you know, take civil servant of, the, of that seniority who has contributed that much, investigate with a view to prosecuting them. Thank you, Mr. Barr. Well, uh, we can only hope it happens to you. Donald Trump found his Roy Cohen in, in, in William Barr. He, he really did. And he twists the law against, uh, against people as a weapon. And maybe trying to send a message not only to them, but anybody who would oppose his policies or his cockamamie decisions uh, gets punished. And the law gets twisted this way. I doubt very much whether the jury would find either of those guys guilty, if anything. Um, but yeah, but look how much time and expense they're going to have to uh, out, put as an outlay right. to defend. You can't get insurance these. for this. Yeah. So, uh, you know, they'll have to go to the bitter end before they are redeemed. Um, this is really a sort of a sad and ugly story. The law was intended to be used in the, as a, a battering ram to punish people proactively yeah. and then send that as a message to the rest of would-be whistleblowers and or people who oppose him. Yeah. This is dictatorship. Yeah. And at the same time, uh, your friend, Mr. Trump, is telling the, uh, the uh, ICE guys that if, if they break, they listen to him and he knows what he's asking them to do is illegal, um, violation of the congressional, obvious congressional intent, um, that he will pardon them. He gives them a pass. He encourages and enables them to break the law. 
Um, and, you know, the word comes out to me, and this is the same guy who twists the law against civil servants like McCabe and Comey. Um, and, you know, what, what I get out of that is, um, you know, that he, he has violated the law in a major way. The law, the spirit, the Constitution, the statute, the spirit of this country, the spirit of democracy, like every day. And, and the word that I get out of it is dienu. Uh, and in your absence, uh, Cynthia Sinclair and I use the word dayenu a number of times. This is a word that means, in Hebrew, as a matter of fact, it means it would have been enough. Ah. Okay? And, you know, the thing about offering a pardon to people who he encourages to break the law, that would have been enough. Yeah. Um, you know, and so many hundreds of things and the lies and the deceptions and the inappropriate connection with the... Uh, you know, with foreign leaders who are adversarial to us. I mean, we could, we could have a show that would last six weeks just identifying all the things, and every one of them is Dayenu. There was a lot of, he mostly just talked about health care. There was very little talk about Trump. I'd like to see more talk about Trump. I'd like to see more talk about the fact that he didn't really win the election. It was a, um, <laughs> it was a fake win that was brought on by help from Russians and his own <clears throat> collusion with them. Yeah. Um, so I have a problem with everybody treating him like he's a legitimate president when he really isn't. Yeah. You know, and when, when Harris did this to Biden uh, a few, you know, Right. Uh, debates ago, she went down in my estimation. It was, right. I thought it was tacky. It was, it was. low class to do mm -hmm. that. And when uh, Castro did it last night, Thursday night, last, last night, night, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, he went down in my estimation too. It's tacky. Oh, yeah. Why do that? Well, and plus he was other... wrong. Sorry. Plus he was wrong. Plus he was wrong. And so I mean, it's a cheap, it's a cheap shot at best. And I, I, I agree with you totally. They ought to focus on Trump. Uh, there was a piece in the New York Times, I think, this morning. Uh, saying, gee whiz, uh, they spent an enormous, uh, Leonhardt, they spent an enormous amount of time on health care and about exactly what the health care insurance policy is going to look like. People right. don't, they don't really want to get into the weeds that way. We have right. bigger fish to fry. Right. We have more, more salient, dangerous problems to deal with. I agree. And the Democrats are all wrong. And, but a part of it is, is of course, the, the journalist moderators. Uh, there was right. another piece about saying, why do you always use journalists? You think they walk on water? How about using uh, history professors, uh, right. political science professors? How right. about using, you know, Lawyers. people from <laughs> the universities in that area right. uh, instead, of, instead of always leaving to journalists? And journalists are looking for raw meat. It's not to their credit that they do this. Anyway, that's, that's my cut on the uh, debates. Uh, well, I, I think it looks like by the numbers, and the numbers can change. We, we know that. They, they may not be, you know, of any consequence later on. Uh, it looks like... Uh, uh, Biden is vying with uh, what, Bernie, Bernie? Warren now. Warren and Bernie, the three of them. The, the three, three of, of them. them. Not clear what's going to happen. Things will change. I agree. Uh, and, you know, the important thing to me and to many, many other people uh, is who, who's, who's capable of winning against Trump. Because if the one person who ultimately stands up is going to suffer all kinds of slings and arrows oh, in yeah. Trump's hands, he's going to try to, you know, decimate them if he can. And, and they have to be able to deal with that. Every time I see the picture of him shaking hands with Putin, you know, at the... We're trying to get him back into the G7. Yeah, exactly. All of that stuff kind of shows that, you know, okay, so we're still going down the list because there's plenty more. Um, and all you have to do is read the Mueller report to know that Russian interference happened and that he cooperated and that he tried to obstruct justice in the process mm -hmm. so that nobody would find out. Mm -hmm. um, now, they listed... Um, Security clearances, secret communications with Putin. We still don't know what he said in Helsinki. He destroyed all the notes. There's no evidence of what was discussed. That is deeply Can we troubling. afford to have a president who does that? It's just deeply with, troubling. With a historical enemy. In fact, a de facto enemy right now. Yes. And he's, and he's having secret conversations. Right. Exactly. Now, the Hatch Act violations, I thought that was... For Kellyanne Conway, and I didn't realize that applied to him, so I'm not exactly sure about the details of that one. But then, okay, we've got the Saudi arms deal. Which well, don't, was, for, don't forget that most recently, where he revealed a, um, a photograph yes. uh, taken by an American uh, satellite right. um, of a, uh, the, the remnants of an explosion in, in Iran. Iran. 
Right. And, and what's interesting about that is it tells the other side, tells the world, all the intelligence agencies of all the rogue nations right. in the world, it tells them our capacity, how, how strong, how ubiquitous our, our uh, satellites are, how clearly we can read fine print right. from miles and miles above the surface of the so He's telling them the specs of our, our military war machine. Right. So That's they can what he's learn telling how to hide from You it. know, if, a, if an ordinary uh, commander in the Navy did this, he'd be in the brig. Oh, yeah. uh, so it's really remarkable that Trump did that. Right. Um, and to me, that's a huge violation. And nobody has punished him. Uh, they've called it to our you know, collective attention, but nobody has punished him, and nobody will punish him unless there's some kind of impeachment process. I agree. Well, we are in an impeachment inquiry. Um, you know, Representative Nadler told us that he is officially in impeachment inquiry and all these investigations come under that right and there's another thing um when you think about giving up our secrets he did the same thing with those russians the important thing is not to limit our attention to specific news events or name calling however shocking or theatrical they may be but to consider the collective and cumulative effect these things have on our lives and on the lives of our children. We need to examine actions and non-actions that do or will affect our lives together, including those that deride the press, deny the truth, divide and evoke hatred and racism, abandon the disadvantaged, undermine the rights of women, promote murderous weapons, and ignore the rule of law, the Constitution, and moral and ethical norms. We must include these issues and threats to our democracy in the public conversation, not just to thrill or threaten people, but to enable voters and officials to develop sound and courageous opinions and thoughtful policies, to make the right decisions, and of course, to protect, defend, and save our republic. And now let's check out our ThinkTech schedule of events going forward. ThinkTech broadcasts its talk shows live on the internet from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. most weekdays. Then we broadcast our earlier shows all night long and on the weekends. If you missed a show or if you want to replay or share any of our shows, they're all archived on demand on thinktechhawaii.com and YouTube. And we post all our shows as podcasts on iTunes. Visit thinktechhawaii.com for our weekly calendar and live stream and YouTube links. Or better yet, sign up on our email list and get our daily email advisories.
If you want to participate in our shows, contact shows at thinktechhawaii.com. If you want to pose a question or make a comment about a show, call 808-374-2014 and help us raise public awareness on ThinkTech. Go ahead, give us a thumbs up on YouTube or send us a tweet at ThinkTechHI. We'd like to know how you feel about the issues and events that affect our lives in these islands and in this country. We wanna stay in touch with you and we'd like you to stay in touch with us. We'll be right back to wrap up this week's edition of ThinkTech. But first, we want to thank our underwriters. Thanks to our ThinkTech underwriters and grantors. The Atherton Family Foundation. Carol Monley and the Friends of ThinkTech. The Center for Microbial Oceanography Research and Education. Collateral Analytics. The Cook Foundation. Dwayne Carisu. The Hawaii Community Foundation the Hawaii Council of Associations of Apartment Owners, Hawaii Energy, the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, Hawaiian Electric Company, Integrated Security Technologies, Galen Ho of BAE Systems, Kamehameha Schools, MW Group, the Scheidler Family Foundation, the Sydney Stern Memorial Trust, Volo Foundation, Yuriko J. Sugimura. Thanks so much to you all. Okay, Keisha, that wraps up this week's edition of Think Tech. Remember, you can watch Think Tech on Spectrum OC16 several times every week. For additional times, check out OC16.tv. For lots more Think Tech videos and for underwriting and sponsorship opportunities on Think Tech, visit thinktechhawaii.com. Be a guest or a host, a producer or an intern, and help us reach and have an impact on Hawaii. Thanks so much for being part of our Think Tech family and for supporting our open discussion of tech, energy, diversification, and global awareness in Hawaii. And of course, the ongoing search for innovation and candor wherever we can find it. You can watch this show throughout the week and tune in next Sunday evening for our next important Think Tech episode. I'm Jay Fidel. And I'm Keisha King. Aloha, everyone. <laughs>